So welcome to our home on wheels, a 2004 Fleetwood Discovery 39J motorhome. This motorhome doesn't resemble anything like it did when we first bought it. And that is because we have made a ton of mods, upgrades, renovations that you're gonna love. We got lots of tips and tricks for that, but we've also done a few things that people have told us are well, kind of controversial. In fact, we recently received a comment asking if this was even legal. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. It's pretty unconventional. Let's go. So five years ago, we decided we wanted to hit the road together as a family. And so we bought our first RV. This wasn't it. It was a different class A motorhome. We realized pretty quickly that with a family of four living in that motorhome, well, it wasn't really working for what we needed. So we sold it and got this instead. And then after realizing that this wasn't exactly working the best with our growing family, not that we were having more kids, but our kids were growing, we needed to do something different. So in 2021, we started a series of renovations and some of those have been a little bit controversial. So we're gonna start in the very back and work our way towards the front for this tour, but this is the master bedroom. As Ben would say, this is where the magic happens. And that's all made possible because right here, we have a washer and dryer. So if you have been following the channel, you know our old one recently bit the dust. And so this was what we ended up going with, which is a brand new Splendid all-in-one washer dryer. So can you say spin cycle? So a couple of things that I like about this versus the old unit is that this has a little bit of a bigger drum on the inside so you can actually fit more, but you can also actually like hit a pause button and pause it if you need to add something to the cycle or run just a dry cycle. So if I need to dry off our towels or something, I can pop them in here for 10 minutes where our other one, you really couldn't do that very easily. So it's more user friendly, I guess is what I'm trying to say now. I will say something about our old unit. We found out that there is something you need to do with these if you have one. And we put that in our other video when we ended up having to remove it. So I'm gonna link that right up here. You definitely wanna take a look at that if you have one of these or considering getting one of these. Right here, we used to have a television. It is no longer here. And so what we did to make the best use of this space is we actually installed this closet made shelf. Now we installed this upside down because with it being upside down, the things that are on it are not going to come off. And so they're secure on travel days. Plus this is like a huge space that literally served next to no purpose other than a big TV that sat there. And so I really find this more valuable than watching television. So if that's what we did there. Now, the next thing that's pretty cool are these closet doors. I absolutely love these closet doors. These actually used to be mirrors. So can you say hello, 1980? So uh, we had some help renovating this RV and the installer did this nice kind of like geometric art deco type pattern on the closet doors and it just brightens the whole thing up. Now, here's a little something we did recently that is new. Guys have not seen this before, never seen before footage right now. But that is, is that Ben and I actually put up this peel and stick wallpaper kind of just at the head of the bed because it was white like the rest of the walls are and we kind of wanted to give it a little pop of color. And then the other thing, this was done before and now at the end of this video, I will link a whole series of videos on all of the renovations so you can see individual things. If you've got questions as you're watching this video, you can definitely leave them in the comments, but chances are if you watch that whole renovation series of videos, you'll probably have your questions answered and we talk more about this. But what we did is then we also installed another roller shade here so we can close this off just to block out the light if we want to do that. So that's brand new versus what we had in here before. The other thing that we've done um, is replace all of the slide trims. One of the things we upgraded as part of our renovation was to replace the factory mattress. And we chose the Aurora Luxe Hybrid Mattress from RVMattress.com. 
It's been great having a mattress that has all the comforts of home because let's face it, this RV actually is our home. Now the process to have it shipped to us and then get it into the RV was super simple because their mattresses come rolled up in a box and wrapped in plastic. So when our mattress arrived, we just hoisted it into the RV, unwrapped the plastic and it like literally poofed right up. But what if you're a part-time RVer or maybe when you're not on the road? One thing we realized is when we were in our RV, we were sleeping much better than when we were at our glamper hideaway, which is our vacation rental. So we went through brooklynbedding.com, which is RV Mattresses' parent company, to get other mattresses for the glamper hideaway. And we upgraded all of the mattresses there to the Brooklyn bedding mattresses. So when we are hosting our guests, we know they're getting a restful night's sleep as well. One of the things we love about RV mattress is they have a factory in Arizona. They ship for free and come with a 10 year warranty. So we are set for a very long time. And because we do want this channel to be a resource for all of you in the RV community, we've partnered with rvmattress.com for 25% off for our viewers. You can learn more at rvmattress.com forward slash grateful. Use the code grateful. Check the link in the description and a huge thanks to RV Mattress for sponsoring this video and their continued support of our channel. So now the other thing that we've got going on kind of down in this area here. Now this actually, there was like a stereo here. Who the heck puts a stereo in the master bedroom of an RV? And here we have all of our displays for all of our solar stuff. So we can look at what's going on with our whole entire solar system, see what's going on with the battery controllers, all of that kind of stuff. If I had a dollar for every time that I got this question via email, a comment on YouTube, an Instagram message, I would be a very rich woman. But people ask about our photos that we have hung throughout our RV. So these are all photos of all of our adventures that we have had. And these are from a company called Mixed Tiles. Not a sponsor, no affiliate. Don't get paid a dime to tell you about this. Just a product that we love and people ask about. And it's super lightweight. You can take it off the wall really, really easily. It doesn't damage the walls. And then you can put it right back up. Okay, so in the closet, we have our charge controllers for the solar panels. So I will put a link above if you'd like to see more information about our solar setup, what we have done with our particular solar system, just more information. I'll have video right up here for you that I know you're gonna find super helpful when it comes to all things solar. So in the bathroom, we have made several upgrades in here. So one of the things that we actually did was some paint and took down one of the cabinets and upgraded the toilet. So we got rid of the RV feeling toilet for something that was a little bit more of a residential feel toilet, if you could say a nicer feeling toilet, which I know sounds weird, but seriously, when you're in your RV full time, you just sometimes need those little bit of creature comfort. The next thing we did was we installed one of these Max Air fans. So this also came from e-trailer in addition to the toilet. And this is great because you can set it to actually come on at a certain temperature if you want. It's reversible so you can make it bring air in, suck air out. Just has more options than the old fan that we used to have in here. We installed these boxes from Hobby Lobby. I just didn't like the cabinet. I didn't like the look of it, but it also wasn't very functional. And I can actually store just as much in these two boxes attached to the wall and my Ikea rack as I could have stored in that cabinet. And then we just installed a nice mirror so you can still kind of have some mirror. I don't know. What do you call that? Some mirror, mirrorness. But I love Ikea and we've done a lot of videos. I'm gonna put one of them right up here where we take you into Ikea and show you all things small living and RV. So next up, we're gonna talk about the kitchen. Now, this is where one of the things that we've done, people have found controversial, but there's something else that's probably our most controversial mod reno thing that's yet to come. But one of the things that people have found controversial is the removal of our propane stove and going completely propane free for cooking and using this induction cooktop instead. Now, I will tell you, yes, this is a little power hungry. Yes, if you exclusively boondock, this is something that you just have to be aware of is a little bit more of a power suck, but it's not that bad. We've got a large enough battery bank. We've got enough solar. This is not a problem at all. And it's less of a safety hazard when it comes to cooking because we have no open flame. Plus, the fact that when we had the propane stove here before, 
there was like next to no storage because it's the stove. And so now we have all of this instead because we have no stove here, which gave us a ton more space. Now, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. I know a ton of you have told me that you're actually just using your stove for storage anyway and not even using it for cooking. So we had the cabinets completely painted. This was done professionally. This was not a DIY project we wanted to attempt because we wanted it to last, but we did repurpose all of the hardware. So this hardware that's on the cabinets is actually the original hardware that came with our RV. The microwave convection oven that we have here, so we can use the convection oven part if we do need an oven. This is the original one. So this was here when we bought it, it's still here, works great. There's no need to replace it or do anything different when it still works just fine. So now one of the most probably intimidating DIY things that Ben and I have done in this RV as of recently, and when I say recently, we're talking about like within the last six months, was we actually converted this also away from propane. So do you kind of see the theme here where we're coming less and less dependent on propane and using electricity as more of our main power source, but we took out the absorption style cooling unit that was on the back of this refrigerator installed one of the Dutch air units from JC Refrigeration. We did it all ourselves, runs on 12 volt. This thing stays ice cold now, whereas before we always struggled with temp. But the greatest thing that I think is that we're repurposing what's here. Now, one of the things that we really are passionate about because we love being outdoors, we love spending time outdoors, is we want to take care of our environment as much as we can. So anytime that we can repurpose something, we can keep something out of the landfill. One of the upgrades we made when we renovated this was actually the dinette. Now this dinette, we actually just replaced for the second time. This one is from Rec Pro. We absolutely love it. And the reason that we love it is because this has kind of piano bench style storage. So you get way, more storage in here, but it's also more comfortable because of the springs that are in the cushions. You feel like you're sitting on an actual couch and not like on a piece of foam that's on a board, like the old style dinette was. But now a little hack that I use because we do travel with pets and kids. One thing that I do to keep these cushions nice and clean and neat and stain free is I actually use crib sheets to cover them. So I have a crib sheet that I've put over the bottom cushion. It helps to protect it from things like stains and food spills and also little animals claws. Here is another upgrade we made that some people have found slightly controversial, but the most controversial one is still yet to come. But we removed a couch and we built bunks. Yes, we put bunks in the living room because this was the best spot for them to go. <laughs> and we didn't want to put them in the closet and then have a bunkhouse in the closet with our children literally sleeping right next to us. We needed some degree of separation. So here they are and they work out great. So we actually found this plan on a website called Rogue Engineer. It's mainly made with two by fours, super simple. We just made it to fit the space. And then we got some mattresses that fit in here, some nice twin size mattresses, and it works great. The best thing that I like about it is the underneath where we have all of the storage that is underneath where we can still put all the kids stuff. So now this is something that we haven't done anything with yet. And you're gonna have to let us know what you think we should do. We're toying around some different ideas, but this couch is the original couch that the RV came with. Now here's kind of our little like, glitch in the matrix, so to speak, is the slide that this is on is a more narrow slide. All of the measurements we have found for RV specific couches, furniture, things like that are not quite going to fit or unless we get something super small, right? We don't want to like replace this within something really tiny. We want something that is somewhat similar. And the other thing is, is the duct work for the heaters underneath it. So you have to think about that as well. So one idea we've toyed around is having somebody kind of build us some sort of custom kind of like a day bed where we could put a mattress on top, some pillows in the back. You have to let us know what do you suggest we do to upgrade this area. But now I'm going to show you kind of our command center, but this is also where our most controversial upgrade, seriously, somebody asked us if this was even legal. 
This is what it is. So up here, we have what I like to call our command center. So here, when we first got our RV, this whole thing actually protruded down about another foot because it had the big old tube style TV in it. So we removed that and it left a big gaping box that actually impeded this wonderful view you have out of a class A windshield, all of that. So we had all of this kind of custom built, got rid of the TV. And that's the most controversial thing because we have no TVs in our RV, none, zip. But there's no lack of screens. We have phones, we have tablets, we have laptops. Like if we need to watch something on a screen, it's not that hard, but the command center, we have our whole blazing fast internet set up here. I have a video above and below if you want to know all of the details on that because it's pretty involved. It's pretty cool. You definitely want to check that out. Up here, we've got kind of our whole system status thing. So we could check the status of the tanks and just what's going on energy and electricity wise, the thermostat, which is another smart thermostat. This RV, we've gotten it so smart, even though it's nearly 20 years old. And then up here, we've got miscellaneous areas where Ben can charge all of the batteries and things like that for all of our camera equipment. So that all sits right up in this area. And then we just recently got this uh, mount from Flagpole Buddy for our Starlink. So that's gonna get mounted in here in a little bit more permanent fashion very, very shortly. Now we could not end this video yet before we show you our most expensive upgrade that we have made. And that is the solar system that we recently installed. Now down here, we have our Victron inverter. We have six Battleborn batteries, 100 amp hour batteries. So here is where all of the more power comes from, but really where it comes from, this is just the storage part is our solar panels up on the roof. Now, because we have a class A motorhome, weight is not an issue and we got a lot of roof space. We were actually able to get residential solar panels, which really have made a huge difference in being able to harness the power of the sun. Now, this particular setup, this is not a cheap setup, but we are absolutely loving the freedom that it is giving us for those overnight stays, those boondocking things, situations like that where we can just be a little bit more off grid if we want, but we're still glamping and we have all of the comforts of home. That's like, so, I don't know, 2004? 70s, it, it had AM It's a 2004. It had an AM FM. It did not have a, um, what do they call CD those? CD player. No, eight track. It did not it have an eight track. CD player, didn't it had a cassette though. <laughs> Moving right along, you could see that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to, how to explain that. You want a mirror in the bathroom to like check your face. That's a whole. You can reflect on I can't tell you how many times that we've told our children to check their face. I'm gonna leave a playlist right up here with our full reno series. So if you'd like to see motorhome start to finish, how everything went, and we had some fails in there, you're gonna wanna check that out right up here. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll see you in the next video.